You want me to take it? Come on. Take a look around Coach Mike Neighbor's home and you'll quickly realize, in the midst of raising two toddlers, this guy likes things. Two, three! From Razorback things, to Star Wars things, to basketball things, to baseball things, to video game things, to music things. Are you a hoarder? No, in fact, I got a sign in here that exactly tells you, well, I'll show it to you. It says, it's not hoarding if your stuff's cool. <laughs> Hoarders, have you, have you watched, everybody's like, you're a hoarder. Have you watched those shows? Those have newspapers and empty pork and bean cans and things. This is collecting. This collection spills over several rooms. In the music room, Coach tells us he learned to play the guitar after a missed opportunity with a girl. Was on a date and the girlfriend thought the guy in the band was a good guitarist and hot. I didn't think he was either. Um, but she ended up dating him instead of me. I'm gonna lose lots of girls over the years, but it's not gonna be because I can't play a guitar. Then back downstairs in the Arkansas room and his beloved Razorbacks. That's Ballantyne, Thurman, and U.S. Reed. Rooms and rooms full of his collections. It began early for Coach Neighbors, simply out of necessity. Anybody that was in elementary school in the 80s had these. I was, there was a big age gap between me and my older brother, about seven years, so I had to just play by myself a lot. So it became baseball cards, it became Star Wars figures that became a collecting thing, and it's just kind of morphed. The baseball helmets started coming out in the early 80s. Uh, we turned those into, you know, have to have them for wiffle ball, but it, it initially started just revolving around having to make up games and play in the neighborhood and, and entertain ourselves, because all of our parents worked. We were all latchkey kids, and they left work at six and came home at five. Now, there's no question that many of these could be sold for a big profit. The wall of Michael Jordan magazines or original figures are proof. But for Coach, it's more about the sentimental value. Everything's got a memory attached to it. It's got probably very little eBay value. I always laugh about it. People are like, how, how much is that worth? I said, to me, it's priceless. My wife, JC, is, was a reluctant collector. She couldn't believe it. Like at first, she was like, this is creepy. Um, but I think what she finally realized being around it was it was more attached to the memories that not the stuff. Got every business card from everywhere I've ever worked. It starts with Blockbuster Video. That was the first business card I ever had. Was I was the general manager at Blockbuster Video. Um, and, and that's the why. You know, if you really want to drill this down to the why, it is so that when you walk by it, you get that memory. Hundreds, actually more like thousands of items, each with a special place in a coach's heart. What do your players say when they come over? <laughs> they call it the museum. And now I will never forget, this is actually called collecting. It's not hoarding though. I, I, can, I can win that argument. It's not hoarding. <laughs>